And now we offer the Multicultural Alliance Annual Award to Rabbi Ralph Mecklenburger, a locally and nationally recognized community leader and respected preacher, scholar, and author. He has been involved in interfaith work for many years, Christian, Muslim, and Jewish dialogue, black and Jewish dialogues, Hispanic and Jewish dialogues. During his rabbinate in Ann Arbor, Michigan, his congregation shared a building with a church for eight years. Rabbi Mecklenburger is an individual who, without question, embodies the spirit, the mission, and the message of the Multicultural Alliance. Rabbi Mecklenburger joins a stellar group of past honorees. No one bridges the past, present, and future of this organization as he does. Rabbi Mecklenburger. I'm genuinely honored and grateful. To see my name on this dinner list is humbling. It's pretty good company to be in if you look over the names in your program. So I thank Paul Jung and Henry Barbola and the whole MCA board for starters. This is an organization that has meant a lot to me over the 27 years that Ann and I have been in Fort Worth. And it's so nice to be honored the same night as Emily Trantham, with whom I worked for most of those years. And it's just a privilege to have begun to get to know and work with Cheryl Kimberling and Adina Citrin Walker, who have not only carried on the mission very professionally, but I consider friends, and they've brought new ideas and energy to the cause. None of my work with, uh, with NCCJ, now MCA, Multicultural Alliance, would have been possible without the loving support of Anne, my bride of now nearly 40 years. Among other things, she managed with our two children, now grown, while I ran off to the Hill Country every January uh, to talk theology. The wonderful people at Bethel Congregation, and a lot of you I know are out there, have been supportive for all of these years as I've tried to practice some of what I preach, namely that religion is not only or even primarily a matter of what goes on within the walls of our religious institutions, but has to be applied in life and society at large. So I have contributed my time, which in a sense was also their time, to all sorts of causes, including this one, without anybody at, at Bethel ever complaining that I ought to be back home taking care of them. I'm flattered to know, and I walked around, I didn't get quite every place, but I'm flattered to know that there are a whole bunch of people out there who came specifically to honor me. But I also appreciate those of you who scarcely ever heard of me, some of you here every year, for we do share and appropriate devotion to the mission of this organization. And I also thank God, the ultimate source of our blessings. God has given me health and the opportunity to serve in this way. It's been fun. I have grown and have also had a good time through my interaction with so many good people, local Fort Worth leaders, and also by now, hundreds of seminarians, lots of them now out serving churches and mosques and synagogues, now, I dare say, less afraid of the other and more apt to work with them for the common good for having had this experience. They now see people of other faiths not as stereotypes, how can they believe that weird stuff, but as faithful servants of God doing their best as they think God calls us to do. Speaking of children, mine and Anne's, Alyssa and Alan, both went to Camp Anytown, Texas, now Camp Community, as you've heard. Others from Bethel, where I serve, have enjoyed it each year and will be back this summer. These multicultural alliance programs really are important. Emily used to run tours of understanding and dialogue groups. And when several of us local clergy a couple of years ago wanted to broaden that, Cheryl and the current board were totally open to trialogue groups and adding a Muslim component. 
MCA staff you probably know, but if not, you need to know, are available to groups who recognize that they need help fostering understanding and overcoming problems that arise, whether in the workplace or in any kind of organizations. So a favorite story. Before the famous 18th century rabbi of Mezrich, a mystical Hasidic master, died, he called his disciples together and gave each one a blessing corresponding to his particular gifts. To one, he bequeathed the gift of wisdom, to another, of humor, and so on. To Rabbi Eli Melech of Lezhensk, it is said, Lezhensk is in Poland, a passionate preacher, he entrusted the sacred task of tikkun olam, of making the world a better place. And when soon after the master died, Rabbi Eli Melech, with that blessing and mission, hit the road, going from town to town to town, gathering crowds as best he could, whether in synagogues or on street corners, telling everyone that we needed to love one another more and help one another. For two years, the story goes, he did that before finally returning home to his wife and family for a much needed rest. And soon thereafter, he had a dream. He dreamt that he was in the presence of his teacher, this rabbi who had given him the miss mission, and he complained to him. Your other disciples, he said, have had success teaching and raising disciples or making people laugh or whatever. I have worn myself out traveling from place to place, and the world doesn't seem one bit better than it was before I left. It's true, the master said. You went out into the world to make it better. But what about the people here in Lezhensk? So for a couple of months, he went and talked on street corners in Lezhensk. But he could see it wasn't helping much. And again, the master came to him in a dream. You tried to help the whole city. How about your household, said the Magad of Mezrich. So he began telling his wife and children what they were doing wrong every day. <laughs> you can imagine how popular that made him. Frustrated, he dreamt again. And the great sage of Mezrich appeared a final time. I still haven't improved the world, Rabbi Eli Melech lamented. Have you begun with yourself? The teacher responded. I wish I knew a shortcut to ending our community's fears and prejudices and misunderstandings, or any communities. There ought to be a quicker, easier way than taking a hundred teenagers here and a bunch of 40 or so potential clergy there off to camp, or running a workshop, and taking this group and that group and going around to schools. If there is such a panacea, though, nobody has reported it back to us in Fort Worth. Only this do I know. I see kids come back, we saw them on the video from Camp Community, anxious to get together with the new friends that they have made, people of every color and religion and culture. And I think that whether or not they keep up those particular friendships, wherever they may move over the years, they really will be less afraid, more willing to love their neighbors as themselves, all their neighbors, for having had the experience. And two or three times each year, when I least expect it, I run into one of those seminarians whom the MCA has been taking a few dozen at a time to the hill country every January. Sometimes I run into them because they bring a group of their congregants to Bethel. And invariably, they tell me what a life-changing experience that hill country retreat was for them. Evangelicals actually getting to know Roman Catholics. Mainstream Protestants talking to a real live Jew or Muslim. And they, as preachers, 
are spreading that message around to thousands more. It worries me from time to time when I hear a colleague or a politician or a pundit talking mockingly of kumbaya moments. Oh, we all gonna sing kumbaya together now? It is not naive foolishness to talk and sing and pray together, affirming our common humanity beneath the rainbow of diversity. As an old 60s folk singer and also as a newer student of how our minds work, I am here to tell you that when we repeat the message enough and add an emotional component, which is what the singing and the dialoguing is all about, it becomes an indelible part of who we are. So we must start with ourselves, one by one and two by two and small group by small group. We will not see cooperation and friendship in the world unless Anglos and African Americans and Hispanics and Asians and everyone else can get along together here in Fort Worth, Texas. And calling for peace in the Middle East is just hot air unless Jews and Muslims and Christians and atheists and everybody else in Tarrant County can learn to be friends. And we can and we have. So of course we all need to do more. But a 60th anniversary really isn't anything to scoff at. We haven't saved the world, or even Tarrant County. But I dare say that this is a better place to live because all of us have been plugging away at it year after year. In sum, you not only honor me, for which I thank you once again, everyone here, but more importantly, we honor ourselves as a community by supporting the mission of the Multicultural Alliance. Let's keep at it. Thank you. <laughs> Rabbi Mecklenberger lives his life in a manner so well aligned with the mission of the Multicultural Alliance, dedicated to pluralism and harmony in our community. He displays excellence in the promotion of diversity, inclusion, and understanding. There is no one more deserving of this award than Rabbi Mecklenburger. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much for those inspiring words. As we look toward the future, it is the many lessons taught, the personal experiences shared, and the conversations started that will bring us that much closer to greater understanding, greater harmony, greater celebration of our differences and courage to take a stand against injustice. Let us carry that vision for ourselves, for our children, and for our children's children. Before I introduce the delivery of the benediction, I just want to share a quote with you from Senator Robert F. Kennedy, <clears throat> spoken almost 45 years ago, that hopefully will speak to the enduring promise of our future. It is from numberless diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped. Each time a person stands for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice. They send a tiny ripple of hope, and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. <clears throat> 